Hello ladies and gentlemen, and in this week's video I will talk about plane films. The plain old radiographs that nobody really seems to care anymore, and we will not talk about MRI today. So the topic of today's video is about different types of arthroplasties and to get the nomenclature right. The reason I have this video planned for this week is because uh, over the last couple of weeks I encountered several times where arthroplasties were not named correctly. So if you have a look at this image here, make up your mind how would you describe this arthroplasty or what kind of arthroplasty is this. So, I'm pretty sure some of you would just go over this case and describe this as okay, there is a okay, total hip arthroplasty on the lateral side. Maybe some of you might even say the cup is a little bit in a malposition, etc. But let's zoom in a little. This is actually just a hemi arthroplasty. It's not a total hip arthroplasty because they did not replace the acetabular side of the joint. This is a bipolar hemiarthroplasty, meaning that they just resected the, the neck and the femoral head after a fracture, so we can see here. So patient sustained a fracture here uh, of the femoral neck and because the joint itself is quite okay, so there is no osteoarthritis or anything, so there is no need to necessarily replace the acetabular side of the joint. So they take out the fragmented head and they take out or cut off the rest of the neck and they put in a hemiarthroplasty and within hemiarthroplasties there are diff uh, two different types so this one is a bipolar hemiarthroplasty meaning you've got the the stem here then you got the round head of the prosthesis and then you got a second like component that is articulating with this smaller uh, head here inside but this one here then articulates with the native acetabulum and you, therefore it's kind of like a bipolar hemiarthroplasty with movements between the small head and this head and this and the acetabulum. So you can easily identify these kind of hemiarthroplasties if you can see the acetabulum spared. So there is um, still this kind of lucency because you still have the normal cartilage in here. So this is how you can identify them. And also if you go back and put them next to each other you can see it was a fracture, there was no OA, and then you can see this subcontral line here, which is a little bit less pronounced, probably also, uh, well, from projection and in general it's less dense. And then you can say, okay, this is a hemiarthroplasty. And here, just another case as well. Again, on the left-hand side, we can immediately see, okay, there is a native acetabulum, we've got the small head inside this bigger head here. So this is a bipolar hemiarthroplasty. And here we cannot really see the central portion. So this might also be just like a unipolar or unipolar hemiarthroplasty. I haven't uh, had the time to look up the surgical notes, but it's certainly just a hemiarthroplasty because the acetabulum is preserved as well. And we can go back in time and see that there was a fracture. This is now a real total hip arthroplasty. So because First of all, the femoral side is replaced as well with the stem and the head here, but also the acetabular side is replaced with this cup here, which is now aligned nicely, good inclination, etc. And you don't see this subcontral line anymore here because this cup is pressed into the bone. There is no articulation or movement between the cup and the acetabular bone. And these frequently are done or most often are done in a setting of hip osteoarthritis as you can see here with joint space narrowing etc and this time if we go big here you can't see the subchondral or subchondral bone plate here anymore so because they they uh, just uh, drill it out and press this one in so and to uh, finalize here also this design where they replace the surfaces only so we don't actually have a stem a really a nice stem here so even with this setting, you can have hemiarthroplasties and total hip arthroplasties. And in this case here, this is actually a, a um, resurfing total hip arthroplasty. And you can see we've got the large replacement of the femoral head surface. And then we've got the replacement of the acetabular side as well. But don't be fooled. Not all of these are actually total hip arthroplasties. You can also easily have just a... Uh, resurfacing of the femoral head and using the native acetabulum. 
Um, I don't have a case where I didn't find one uh, during my quick search, so that's why I'm just showing you this here. And they are sometimes also called ASR, Articular Surface Replacements. Um, it's just one of the other names that can be used here. So this was probably too basic for some of you guys, but I think it's important that uh, especially residents uh, know about this and as a board certified radiologist you should certainly not make this mistake anymore. If you want to know more about this kind of different uh, techniques, I put the link to this article in the description down below. Post-operative radiographs of the hip arthroplasty, what the radiologist should know. It's a very good article and you can see different types of hip arthroplasty and fixation techniques. So this is what we just covered in today's video. It's basically hemi-arthroplasty and total hip arthroplasty as the large two components. They show these kind of nice examples here as well as we discussed. So this one being a cementless resurfacing hemi-arthroplasty where they just replaced the surface of the femoral head and did not touch the acetabular side. Whereas here, as I have shown you, where both surfaces are replaced, therefore a resurfacing total hip arthroplasty. So there, they are also talking about cement, etc., osteolysis and other stuff. So go check this article out. It's a very good article. And that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and see you next time.